Bowman. Let's go to Michigan, where Representative McLean is standing by. She's ready to go. Uh, Representative McLean, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, let's just, out of curiosity, stay, stay with that same theme. Um, but I'd like an answer from all of you. Do you support students? Yes, Doctor, I you do, do support students. Wonderful. And I think it's um, crazy to say that supporting students somehow makes you anti-teachers union or Department of Education. <laughs> I mean, the teacher, let, let's understand, and, and unions are great, right? Teachers, unions are just that. They support the teachers. So I thought we were doing a hearing on students. So you support the students. Yes. How about you? Do you support students? Yes, ma'am. Next. Yes, I do. Wonderful. How about you, ma'am? Of course. OK, just so we're all clear, we're all here about the students, right? Because the goal today is about the student. Just checking. OK. All right. In my home state of Michigan and across the country, families have suffered through prolonged school closings and lockdowns during the COVID-19 pandemic. That just it, it is what it is, right? Most students fell behind in math and reading, and we actually have data, facts, right, to support that. Um, and due to the forced remote instruction, I mean, I think the teachers did the best they could with the situation at hand. But Dr. Burke, can you talk more about how School of Choice actually helped families during the pandemic? Sure. Because I think what the pandemic showed too is people learn in different ways, right? We, we shouldn't go and we shouldn't just have this one size fits all because last I checked, we're here about the student, right? So do you think School of Choice helped parents get their kids back in school sooner? Do you think in-person instruction would help these students close the learning gap created by the pandemic? Can you just talk about little, a little bit about that from the eyes of the most important, and that is the student? Yes, thank you, Congresswoman, for reorient, reorienting us to the student question uh, at hand today, because it is all about students, and we do not want students trapped in unaccountable public schools. Uh, but if we look at Catholic schools in particular during the pandemic, you're absolutely right. Private schools were much more likely to reopen much quicker than the district schools, largely because teachers unions kept those district schools closed. If we look at Catholic schools, they opened much quicker as soon as they knew it was safe to reopen, when the science showed that it was safe to reopen schools. And the result has been pretty phenomenal. There was a, a, a piece by Kathleen Porter McGee in the Wall Street Journal recently and she found that if all Catholic schools, all 1.6 million children in Catholic schools were a state, they would outperform every other state on the NAEP in math and reading. Well, and so they gained, low-income kids in particular, uh, minority students in Catholic schools gained uh, 10 points in reading over the course of the pandemic when students across the country actually lost uh, three points in reading and eight points in math. I mean, this is a phenomenal story to tell about how Catholic schools thrived. Well, let, Dr. Burke, let's not let the facts get in the way of good story over here. So, <laughs> Mr. Messer, in your testimony, you mentioned the overwhelming support that School of Choice has among parents. In Michigan, we provide zero, no public support for parents to choose private educational options. The state is an increasingly out of step with the other states that do help parents access private schooling options policies that have a clear record a clear record of success again facts can you talk more about what the polls tell us about support for school of choice across the country in my last minute remaining yeah i mean overwhelmingly we live in an america today where we agree on almost nothing right <laughs> but we all agree on school choice poll after poll 90% 80% 70% of americans support school choice support here's three simple concepts one no child in america should be forced to go to a failing or unsafe school and every parent should be able to move their child if they're in if their kids in that kind of school 80 percent support across america it's not fair that only wealthy parents get to choose where their child goes to school 80 percent support all across america schools should focus on the basics not pushing a political agenda Parents should have a right to send their child to a different school if they think their school has gotten too political. 80% across America, including, by the way, 80% of African-American parents who support that same 
point of view. If this was about what the American people want, we'd have universal school choice everywhere already. Imagine what we can do if we put the child first, we leave politics and, uh, at, at, uh, at the home, and uh, again, just really put the children first and we focus on facts, and, and amazing what would happen if we had some accountability and some measurements. So with that, I yield back. Thank you.